In this video, we are going to see Nyquist stability criterion in the frequency domain analysis of control systems. And its basis comes from the principle of argument which we discussed in the previous video. Okay. To start with, let's take an open loop transfer function g of s times h of s. Okay. And I am taking ratio of polynomials. Let's say n of s is the numerator polynomial and d of s is the denominator polynomial. And uh, assuming the order of polynomial of numerator is m and order of the denominator polynomial is n. And in general, the physically realizable systems in reality will have the order of denominator greater than the order of polynomial of the numerator. Okay. Now, if you are given an open loop transfer function like this, g of s times h of s, Okay, the closed loop transfer function for the corresponding system would look something like this. Okay, g of s over 1 plus g of s times h of s. This is called closed loop transfer function. And g of s h of s is open loop transfer function. And we have characteristic equation, okay, which is 1 plus g of s h of s. And if we rewrite this 1 plus g of s h of s in terms of n of s and d of s, we can write this as d of s plus n of s over d of s. If we equate d of s equals 0 and find out the roots for this equation, those roots will be the poles for characteristic equation. Okay, And the poles for g of s, h of s are also the same because d of s equals to 0 is the same equation. So, the poles of characteristic equation are equal to poles of open loop transfer function. This is a very important statement. Okay. And if you look at the zeros of 1 plus g of s h of s, we find that out by equating the characteristic equation to 0, which is nothing but the roots which we are going to get here are zeros of characteristic equation. Let's write down here zeros of characteristic equation, which are also the poles of closed loop transfer function. Okay, when this is equal to zero, okay, the poles, the roots which you are going to get for one plus g of s h of s will be the poles for closed loop transfer function. Okay, poles of closed loop transfer function, and these two statements are very very important. Okay which we are going to revisit while proving Nyquist stability criterion, how it is dealt. Okay. And now, before getting into the Nyquist stability criterion, let's discuss the stability aspect of it. Okay. Now, when do we say a system is stable? We say, if you take S plane, okay, as we saw in root locus diagrams, if we have a pole in the right half of S plane, then we can say that particular system is unstable. Okay, and if we have poles on the j omega axis, then we can say, and if it is not there, okay, and if we have only poles on j omega axis, it can be marginally stable. And if we have multiple poles at the same point, it will be unstable. And to show this, okay, by using principle of argument. And the principle of argument states that if we have S plane and if we consider a closed contour, okay, in clockwise direction, as we discussed in the previous video, okay, and the area enclosed by this contour is marked here. And if you take a function f of s, and for each and every value on the contour, if we put it in and get a corresponding values and plot it on a different complex plane. Okay, the contour is on S plane and let's take this as W plane. Okay, W. And this W is different from the omega of S. Okay, now we may get encirclements around the origin okay, of this plot depending on the number of poles and zeros enclosed by this closed contour. Okay, we have seen examples in the principle of argument video. Okay, now if we take F of S as 1 plus g of s h of s. Okay. 1 plus g of s h of s. Now, 
If you want to see what are all the pearls and zeros present in the right half of the S-plane, then we can extend this contour to actually cover the whole positive side of the S-plane. Okay, Positive side of the S-plane. The way we are going to do it is by assuming a semicircle. Okay, Assuming a semicircle on S-plane. Okay, let's take this. It doesn't look like a semicircle. Adjust with it. Okay, and this is a contour. Okay, closed contour. And let's take the radius of this as r. Okay, and now if we let r tends to infinity, then we can say the semicircle or this closed contour covers the whole positive S-plane, including the J-omega axis. Okay, please make a note. Then, we can say this whole contour can be divided into three parts. Okay, one starting from 0 to plus infinity. Okay, and the second, this is the first region. Okay, and the second region is going from plus infinity to minus infinity. Okay, and the third region is minus infinity to 0. And if you substitute these values of the contour, in 1 plus g of s h of s okay we're going to get a corresponding closed uh, contours okay in this complex plane let's say w plane okay the values of 1 plus g of s h of s now suppose assume that we get a plot like this okay we get a plot like this in clockwise direction okay and we have encirclement around zero of the plane then we can say the number of encirclements around the origin is one okay it is in the clockwise direction so we are taking it positive now this will be equal to z minus p and this z indicates the number of zeros in the right half of s plane for this in the s plane okay and p indicates the number of poles in the positive half of s plane which are covered by this closed contours okay and now we know that this p is nothing but the pole, number of poles of g of s h of s in the right half of s plane. We can get this if we are given g of s h of s. So p we can obtain. And n we can obtain by plotting the corresponding function values for this contour in the s plane. So we can get n. The only thing we need we need to calculate is z. Okay, Number of zeros of 1 plus g of s h of s. Number of zeros of 1 plus g of s h of s are nothing but number of poles of closed loop transfer function, which means we are going to find the number of poles of closed loop transfer function if you are given g of s h of s. That's it. Okay. So if you know the number of poles in the right half of s plane of the closed loop transfer function, we can tell whether the system is stable or not. Okay. Now we were discussing about the 1 plus g of s h of s plot for this semicircle closed contour. Okay, fine. 1 plus g of s h of s. Now assume you get a plot like this, just taking the similar example at the previous one. Okay. If you are given g of s if you are given g of s h of s, we, are, we don't have to calculate 1 plus g of s h of s. Instead, instead of cal, uh, plotting the values for 1 plus g of s h of s, if you plot g of s h of s values in this plot w plane, how does the plot look? Okay. Suppose if you take a value of 1.2 here, okay, then g of s h of s value for that 1.2 of 1 plus g of s h of s will be 0.2. Okay, if you if you point out all these values, okay, correspondingly, fine, and we are going to see a plot the whole one plus g of s h of s plot will be shifted towards the left hand side by a distance of one. Okay, if you take the same point it will be shifted by 1. Now, instead of checking for the encirclements around the origin here, if you check encirclements around minus 1, okay, if you take the plots for g of s, h of s, okay, this is for g of s, h of s, 
and this is for 1 plus g of s h of s. If you look at the encirclements for minus 1, that will be pretty much enough to explain the stability of the closed loop transfer function. Okay, so from this we can make a conclusion saying that if you are given g of s h of s, okay, if you know the Nyquist plot for the closed contour in the s plane, which is like this, okay, like this, where r is tending to infinity, okay. Then, if you plot the corresponding plot for g of s h of s, and if we look at the number of encirclements around minus 1, okay, that will be equal to number of encirclements n. When we take n in the clockwise direction, it means n is positive. And then we write z minus p. p is nothing but the number of right half side poles of g of s h of s. And n we are going to get if we draw the plot of g of s h of s for this corresponding contour. And z is the thing we need to know, okay? And z is nothing but zeros of characteristic equation, which are nothing but poles of closed loop transfer function. From this, we can say whether a system is stable or not. In the coming videos, we will see special cases of this. When we have poles on the j omega axis, what are we going to do? And if we have multiple poles on the j omega axis and how, how are we going to solve the problems we get more sense into this when we do problems and in the next coming videos we're going to see some problems based on Nyquist stability criterion okay